Okay, back to Mass Effect again. Let me see what we got to do now. Um, those are all of our current main quest or assignments. Pretty, they look pretty hefty, but they're not that bad. Do we have one actually for Tally or no, do we not? We're never gonna complete that one. Mark all entries as viewed. Mark all entries as viewed, okay. Um, we'll go down the list of assignments later. I'm going to kill everything um, that's on the galaxy map that's obvious first. Main thing, uh, we're going to go straight to Android, or sorry, Asteroid. Android. <laughs> yeah, almost said Android X. Android 18. That would have been... We got a rescuer from Cell. Yeah, seriously. Travel to another system, go. Oof. This was the free DLC that came with Mass Effect when I first bought it. Okay. As opposed to the $15 DLC that was Pinnacle Station, and you will be able to see the difference between the two. X-57 is a metallic asteroid originally located at the trailing language point of gas, the gas giant bore with the increased development on Terra Nova, a new orbital is never necessary. So basically what this thing is, is an asteroid that, um was really rich, rich in mineral deposits near mm -hmm. Te Terra Nova, which is like a new Earth. Yeah. Um, but recently, communications with the engineering team on X-57 have been lost. The fusion torches have reignited, and the asteroid is now accelerating towards Terra Nova. So we need the Starship Enterprise to use its deflector dish to push it away from the planet. But meanwhile, Commander Shepard's going to beam down to the planet's surface, get zapped by some ancient idol, lose his memory, and pretend he's one of the uh, indigenous peoples of the planet. Yes. The Apple. Star Trek, the original series. Check this thing out. Status. Sensors reveal three fusion torches propelling asteroid X-57. At its current rate of acceleration, the asteroid will collide with Terra Nova in approximately four hours. Analysis. Torches must be disabled to cease the acceleration. Who's... Is that the Normandy computer talking? Hello. I heard your transmission. Can you hear me? They haven't found me yet, but I can't talk long. Shut down the fusion torches. I'm going to die. God, I hope you're hearing this. Okay. This is God. I'm not here, but if you'll leave a message... In all seri seriousness, this mission starts off awesomely, because it gives you an immediate sense of urgency that you're on a timer. Yeah. Even though you may or may not be on a timer. So, our objective is pretty clear. We have to shut down all of these really huge-ass torches with this awesome background. In general, this is a very impressive-looking mission from the get-go. The way the torches are positioned on the asteroid, the asteroid itself should be turning, tumbling around and around, and not actually going very far in any direction. I don't know who you are, but I'm... Damn it. Go. Just the, the, the physicist in me is... Just wishing they'd put the torches on the exact opposite side of the moon uh, asteroid from the planet, but then you wouldn't get, you know, the background of the planet. Yeah, I guess so. It also might be just propelling the, uh, it might be, um, that there, there is other torches and that these are just lit up, um, for reasons. Maybe. I would imagine that there's more than three torches, it's just they picked these three. Also, the torches don't actually need to be on anymore, because now that the asteroid has the momentum, it's going to keep going without the torches being lit. So if you take the torches out, is the asteroid still going to be tumbling towards the planet? I guess we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. It all depends on how fast we can do this, actually. I like to feel- I, I'm not really sure if it is or not, but... Fuck. Oh god. Shitballs. Uh, uh, Omni gel. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Woohoo! That was a good shot. Right. Great balls of fire. Perimeter secured. Yeah, that's another thing. Um... On this mission, when 
you're when the turrets aren't shooting at you, they put up protective covers, so you can't snipe them from a long distance away and That's cheese clever. them. Yeah, this is a really well designed uh, DLC. Okay. You have to you have to pretty much do this part with the um, with the Mako also. I need to remind myself to quick save this very often. Whew. It's over now. Yeah, I think I got one. Okay, let's disable the first torch. I think actually I need to switch back to um, what ammo do I, type that I have. Switch to incinerary. No, I think I want polonium again. Being able to stop people from regening health was really, really good last time. All right. Mm -mm. Hi, Batarians. Marak! Check! Check! Alliance military! Alliance military! Our puppies. Release the Varen! <laughs> awesome. I love it. I've heard about releasing the Varen, but that's ridiculous. Okay. Um, what we got here? What we got here? Move it. There we go. Jeez. Can you melee pe uh, I forget if I I did ask you this way in the beginning of the game. But does melee work in this game? Yes, it does. I'm doing it right now, actually. It's hard for me to see. It's so dark. It's over now. All right, I think we cleared this room out. That's going to be my new, um, my new, the way you see me do combat from now on, because I've got the shock trooper specialization. I'm not ever going to use cover anymore. There's no need to. Unless it starts to get really bad, and then I'll just run out of the room. And uh, sit in the corner and wait for one of my um, different things to pop back up. But, uh, okay, let's do a little bit of looting in this room, and then go to the next torch. So, this one has a little bit of a... Um, a backstory. I don't know if you've heard about the Batarians in the game yet, so I won't say too much about them till after this is over, but obviously we both know about the Batarians because they're really heavily prevalent in the second game. Mm -hmm. And this... Weren't they the race that um, was attacking uh, Kala? Uh, att online. Was that you? Can you hear me? Who are you? What's going on? My name's Kate Bowman. I'm an engineer. I was part of the team assigned to bring this asteroid to Terra Nova. We were attacked yesterday by Batarian extremists. I've been hiding since they arrived. I think they know the torch went out. Why are they doing this? I don't know, but if this asteroid isn't slowed, millions of people on Terra Nova are going to die. If I find out anything, I'll... I've got to go. Good luck. I think the torches are actually in place to maintain the, um, the, because they brought it here to mine it. So I think the torches are actually in place, um... To maintain its orbit. Yeah, to maintain its orbit, and now the torches are on, on too, like, hard, so it's slowly descending into the planet, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and having the torches on will help speed up the descent of the asteroid, so I guess that's why they're still on. Yeah, so... Technically, we got this mission a while ago, but in order for this mission to make sense, it would have had to have just started, and we just got the distress signal and just came here as soon as it, the okay. distress signal came on. 
Um, what I was just saying before was, um, I'm not sure if I heard this at the beginning of this game, but uh, the Batarians, were they responsible for raiding a few human colonies in the um, in the far re in the far rim? Hey, I think so. <laughs> oh God, I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about me. Takes more than one shot to bring me down. Sorry, I didn't even realize you were human until, well, I guess I'm not much of a soldier. Let's be more careful. I know you're scared, but I'm here to help. Commander Shepard with the Alliance. Simon. Simon Atwell. I'm the chief engineer on this rock. Listen, we don't have much time. The Batarians fired up the fusion torches. You've got to shut them down before we hit Terra Nova. There are four million people down there, Shepard. I... My family. They live in Aronis. My kids and grandkids. Nice community. It's good schools. I understand the situation. Batarians everywhere, and I need to shut down all three torches. Batarians Anything everywhere! No. <laughs> One of the torches is surrounded by live blasting caps. We were set up to excavate when we arrived at Terra Nova. I rigged them with proximity detectors. That tank of yours will set them off, so you'll have to go in on foot. Even then, they'll explode if you get too close. Just go slow and easy. You should be fine. Can you shut them off? You set them up. Can you disable them? Not from here. No. There are manual controls by the entrance to the torch facility inside the blast zone. You can disarm the caps there. One last thing. I had a crew working off-site when the attack hit. I'm worried about them. These Batarians are ruthless. I saw them smash the faceplates of guys working vacuum. And those Varen. I don't think they always wait for a corpse before feeding. Okay. I'll do what I can. I'll look for them. But the torches have to be my priority. Yeah, you're right. Saving Terra Nova is more important than my team. There were a bunch of engineers over at the main facility, but they're probably all dead. That or being held hostage by the Batarians. I think one of them got away. A woman named Kate Bowman contacted me. The Batarians haven't found her yet. Katie's alive? She's one of my best engineers. She signed on with her brother, Aaron, I, th I think his name is. He's part of the security detail. I hope they're okay. Okay. There's probably not enough time to evacuate, I'm not going to ask that. Um, I want to know more about the asteroid, actually. Why were you moving this thing in the first place? Well, the idea was to drag it into Terra Nova's orbit, mine it out, and in the end you'd have a basic structure for an orbital station. It's a lot cheaper than getting everything up into orbit from the planet's surface. The minerals we extract almost cover the costs. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah. Stay out of sight. You better find a good place to hide. If the Batarians come back and find you... Yeah. I think I'll make myself scarce. Good luck, Shepard. Okay. So, in case you haven't noticed, this is a really good DLC. Um, immediately, you kind of feel something towards, like, all the people you're working with. Um, the, the chick trying to help you and feeding you information when she can. Just the random people you come across seem to be really fleshed out. Like, the guy that jumps literally shoots you in the chest, and Shepard's just like, yeah. oh, I've got <laughs> shields, never mind, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, she's been through a lot worse than that. So, um, we're gonna check out this little station up here on top of this thing, and then we're gonna head to the next fusion torch. Uh, you said you got this for free. Yes. Is it Was it a discount, or was it actually released for free at the time? It came with the game. It was a bonus DLC that just came with a new copy of the game. Really? Yes. It was an, it, it was an encouragement. So um, back then there were a lot of people that were like pirating and getting games secondhand. So, uh, getting... so this was a way to get people to buy the genuine copy because they would get more game. Yes. That's pretty clever. Yeah, it was. It was a great way to handle it. And it was all Bioware's idea for that. So... It was a great idea. Of course idea. it wouldn't have been EA's idea. Okay. Um, do, EA would have been that. like, hey, let's uh, let's make this a GameStop ex pre-order exclusive. Yeah, something like that. Um, Alright, so we just fixed that, and that's going to show all these different nodes on our map. Survey Station 1, 3, and 2. Um, and we're going to go check out 1, and then we're going to go here. Then two, and then there, and then three, I think, is the order we're going to do this in. So, we're going to just bebop around and check out these different places. Break all of the equipment on top of this mountain because they don't need it anymore. Yup. And, um, that's just how we'll handle this. Oh, wow, still going. Okay. Anyway. 
recutting any of this? Um, we're not gonna cut any of this mission now. I'll probably just speed up segments. This is a really, this is a really good DLC to just like explore around in a little bit. We probably won't be doing any other planetary explore exploration okay. other than this. Like this is the pinnacle of what is considered good Mass Effect uh, exploration uh, planet side. But Pinnacle was a terrible mission. Pinnacle was bad. <laughs> Pinnacle was terrible. Um, I just had to... You used the word, so I had to say something about I it. I understand completely. And I will be cutting some of this out, but I do want to get this entire section recorded so I can determine myself what I need to cut out and what I don't. This computer is filled with operation logs and personal journals for a small pirate music station operated by X-57's engineers. Includes scripts for several promotional messages, messages, none of which appear to have been recorded. Radio X-57, rocking this rock since 2182. Radio X-57, when your world seems hollow, we help you touch the sky. Oh my gosh, yes, that's the episode I was talking about from Star Trek. Actually, there were two, there were two asteroid episodes, that was the second one. Wow. That's I amazing. I figured you'd love this DLC. And then we can turn the radio station on. Yeah. This It's a really good one to just explore around and just see what random crap uh, is just in places. Let's see. Alright. So there's the radio station. So let's go... I'm head bopping for those who can't see it. Oh, it even keeps the radio on while you're in the yes. Mako! Yeah, you're picking up- it's transmitting, so you're picking it up in the Mako. That's funny. Oh, it's gone. Aw, uh, we drove too far away. Darn it. it! It was still funny. It was good, I liked it. Come on, for a space-based transmission station, they should have longer range than that. I mean... Maybe they're running out of batteries. I mean, that's true. everyone up here has been dead for a little while, so... Yeah. Or dead or taken hostage, I don't think oh, anyone bothered When your world to... seems hollow, that will help you touch the sky. That is amazing. That's actually one of the worst episodes of Star Trek. Oh, it is it? Yeah. I don't even remember it. Um, I believe it was the episode where um, uh, Kirk orders Sulu and a bunch of red shirts to stay on the planet's surface while they investigate a colony that was built inside of a rogue asteroid. And the reason that Sulu and company were left on the surface... Dr. Himes. They found me, damn Batarians. I can hear them out there prowling around, trying to find a way in. It sounds like they're attaching something to the door. If I don't make it, tell my family I love them. Mm. Oh, well that's good. Yeah. Small blessings. This is Dr. Hines. They found me. Um, Dan so Materials. Kirk orders Sulu and a bunch of red shirts to stay on the surface so that because the asteroid is so thick, the materials are so dense, they're not letting comm signals through. Mm -hmm. So Kirk says that all messages Kirk needs to send to the Enterprise while they're inside the asteroid should be relayed through Sulu. He can get to, he can contact Sulu. And then Sulu can contact the Enterprise. The plot hole, um, well, um, so the asteroid surface is so far away from the nearest sun that the surface actually gets extremely cold. And Sulu's team is like standing there, like phasering rocks to create a source of warmth. I remember that. And they've got this, like, they have like this, like, powder caked onto them to make it look like ice is like forming on their faces and stuff. And they're just, the characters are just suffering on the surface. You hear me? I'm getting all kinds of interference. Damn. Sorry. There's a lot of feedback. Let's see if I can fix it. In the meantime, just keep doing what you're doing. Yes, ma'am. Now, after you watch the episode, you start thinking about the circumstances a bit more. Those are the mines, the orange things. Yes, that's where the minefield starts. Warning. Oh. Ground penetrating radar detects anti vehicle demolitions nearby. Proceed on foot. Yes, so, Mako, thank you. When you realize that um, all they had to do was beam down a transmitter and put that on the surface to, to pick up Kirk's comm signal and boost it up to the Enterprise, you wonder why they use Sulu and a bunch of actual people. And then you're thinking, well, okay, maybe, you know, Kirk just needs to, you know call Sulu, and maybe he has to actually have Sulu, you know, call the Enterprise for him. Oh, Jesus, oh, fuck. I clipped the corner. Critical mission failure. Yep. Yup. Damn it. How long ago was my last save? Boys. 
it was right after I got out, so we can go back to just do those two things. Okay, we're back, and I blew up all the freaking stupid ass mines. So we're gonna go into this place and disable the next torch. Um, this is a little special. So, um, we're gonna see how this works. Hostile spotted. It's over now. <laughs> Thanks, Liara. Alright. Jesus Christ, I hate this part. It's fun, actually. It's just really Is stressful. Is there a specific single path you have to take? Yes. Wow. So it's not just, you know, don't go near one of the spinny things. Yeah, you have to be very, very careful. And you have to use your mini-map to plot a course through all these mines. There we go, I think I found it. Yeah, it's a good thing they didn't make you do combat before before this point. Alright, so, um, not only was it pointless in the Star Trek episode to have, um, like, uh, why did they just put, like, a signal booster on the planet and not have actual people there freezing their butts off? Um, but you'd think, okay, well, maybe Kirk has to actually send Sulu, like, Sulu, tell the Enterprise they need to, you know, you know, uncouple the Heisenberg compensators, and then Sulu will contact the Enterprise and tell them to do that. Even if that was the case, even if they had to have a person there, not once during the episode does Kirk relay a message to Sulu to send to the Enterprise. That's amazing. The only message he sends while in the asteroid is at the very end of the episode when he asks Scotty to beam them up. And he talks to Scotty, he goes, Scotty, beam us up, and they beam up. What in the world? Yeah, so Sulu and his pals were sitting in like negative 40 degree temperatures, freezing to death, for no reason at all. <laughs> Kirk's like, ha ha, the can handle it. Wow, wow, okay. okay. I'm being, I'm being like, you, you know, just- I know, but I just didn't expect you to use a word like that. I've been watching too much Game Grumps. I've been really- it go, been, It's just like the N-word in Game Grumps. It's, uh- Oh, it's not, it's not as bad as the N-word okay, in Game Grumps. Okay, it's not as bad, but it's close. <laughs> I wouldn't bleep that word, because that's definitely not a racial slur, yes, in my opinion. Is it? Uh, some people have said it is, so I'll take their word for it. Oh my god, okay. Yeah. If I get called on it and someone goes, don't call me that, I'll be like, okay, fine, mm. sorry. I didn't realize that was insulting. That was a good shot. I think. Oh, hi. <laughs> Peekaboo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. Are you really? serious? Really? Are you serious? Did One it rocket. Save when we entered the building? Uh, I don't remember. We'll find out. Yes, it did. Good. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Mass Effect. The, this is why. This is why this is the only strategy that is viable in this game. Because of shit like that. It's, it's fucking ridiculous is what it is. Okay, just for clarification, I didn't know, and I apologize if I offended anyone by using the C word. Can we call it the C word? I'm, I'm seriously paranoid about that not now. I've think, never, ever heard of that being called a racial slur. I have only, you know, it, because it's not really used at all, it's unlike the N word, uh, the word, Pikachu. like all one word like that, hasn't really, you know, become like a slang. It's just, I, from the context that I've heard it being used as a, um, as a slur, is really much more passive than the N-word. The N-word is a word of hate. It's like, a, it's a word that's used as a hateful thing against, um, uh, you know, against black people. Yeah. But, uh, Pikachu. is more passive. It's more, um, uh, it's more of just of, out of, uh, ignorance 
from what I hear, uh, in the first half of the uh, 20th century, uh, immigrants of Asian descent, or uh, Asian immigrants, or their, their families, born in the United States, no matter if they're from China or Japan or Vietnam or, you know, anywhere in Asia, they were called, they were referred to in the colloquial term of Pika. And this was offensive for several reasons. One, because they may not necessarily be from China, but because they all looked, you know, the same. Yeah, that I got that. Everybody was, you know, so it's more of a passive racist term. Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't if if I was from Japan and I was called a Pika. I would be pissed. That would definitely like irritate me. Also, you know, what if okay. you're what if you were born in the United States? What if your parents were born in the United States and their parents were the ones that actually immigrated from China? Yeah, definitely. You're not a Chi you're not Chinese. You're ac you're American. To, to clarify, the idea that Americans that you make yeah. really to clarify, I was using it from a Kirk standpoint of yes. him being discriminatory. Exactly, and that was you know, it was in, in that context. context. It is humorous. I would never, I humorous. would never call someone that to their face. That would be <laughs> the most douchey thing. I have called someone a douche. That's fine though. No, I. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's not racist, but it's Who's an insult. Who's shutting down the torches? I won't ask you again. Oh. Find this problem and deal with it. Yeah, whatever, four eyes. <sighs> well, see, that's not racist because they have four eyes. That's true. That is indisputable. That is not a term of ignorance. They literally have four eyes, so we can call them four eyes all we want. Fucking green skin with vagina faces. <laughs> <laughs> the look you gave me was perfect. It was what I was going for. It's just, it's a look of, where did that even come from? I was just trying to be as, to invent the most racial thing. I fucking hate Batarians. Straight up. They're my least favorite people on the planet. Now, I am not a racist. I just fucking hate Batarians. Yeah. I hate all Batarians. Batarians are douchebags, though. Not because I'm a racist, but because all Batarians are douchebag vagina faces. Yeah. That's a fact. It's a fact. It's true. Ask a doctor. It's They'll true. tell you their vagina is attached to their face. <laughs> Puts new meaning to the word skull fuck. Well, then. Um... I'm gonna get in the Mako and let's go to the next place on our magical mystery cruise. <laughs> let's see. Uh, we handled that place. That's the next fusion torch. So we just went from talking about Star Trek, which is one of like the pioneering like anti-racist shows. Oh, it totally of was. Culture, man. And we've gone straight into just throwing out insults left and right. It's fun, though. I mean, Batarians aren't real, so you can be racist against Batarians all you want. Yeah. If, Batari if Batarians were real, I would mm, still be racist, because I hate Batarians. It, it's funny, it's like, okay, because they're fictional people, does that mean you can't, it's, does that mean it's better to be racist against them? But, is it, it, if you're against racism on principle, it should be the same thing as being racist against a real person. Because all racism is discrimination. I have a counterpoint. What? Stupid jellyfish. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We wouldn't have the jellyfish line if it weren't for racism. You're right. You're right, Rec. I haven't considered just how much good racism has done for humanity. It has done a lot of good for humanity. You big stupid jellyfish. You big stupid jellyfish. That line is just so good. It makes centuries of white supremacy worth it. It's not really white supremacy. Well, true, I mean... It's more like monkey it's, supremacy, It's not honest. like other races haven't been racist. Oh, Jesus! Racism, that's a lot of turrets at once. Back the fuck up, Mako. Whoop! 
Haha, <laughs> you can't get us. Whoop! Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I told Wah! you about how racist. I told you about um, uh, that like Michelle Nichols, George Takei, and um, Walter Koenig weren't asked to reprise their roles for the Star Trek animated series. What? Um, when Star Trek made their animated series in the seventies, the show had an extremely limited budget, of course. Mm. And so the producers at um, I'm not sure which producers. It was either the producers of Paramount or the producers at. Um, uh, the animation studio, or possibly just other producers, like whoever, they went to Gene Roddenberry and were like, all right, we don't have enough funding for the whole cast. We can't bring the whole cast in because they're screen actors. They'd be paid more than, than traditional voice actors would. So they're like, okay, let's just get, um, let's get Kirk, Scotty, oh God. Spock, and Bones. And then, um, we'll get... Uh, Majel Barrett, who is Roddenberry's wife, she'll do all the uh, she'll do Ahura and any other female voices, and James Doohan will do Sulu and all the male voices. What the fuck? Sometimes Liara just makes the crazy shit go flying through the air. Yeah. She just even when she doesn't need to, because yeah. she likes doing it. I mean, I, I admit, if I had mutant powers too, I'd probably just do them the same thing. That was extremely racist. <laughs> <laughs> what? You call what? her a mutant. She's perfectly normal. She's not normal. She's a mutant. She <laughs> has powers beyond that of mortal man. And therefore, she has a mutation. And that's why I support Senator Kelly's bill to force all mutants to register You're trying with the to government. talk your way out of this one. It's not gonna work. <laughs> It I used happening. the word mutant because I forgot the word biotics for a minute, yes. Okay. I defaulted to a more ignorant term because I'm ignorant. We're discussing, I had a moment of ignorance. We're discussing fictional racism. <laughs> like, it's a serious shit. By the way, this room is set up really well. Um, they put a lot of different spins on this, like, standard bunker. That you find a lot in this game. Yeah, this is a this this area looks different from anything we've been in, which is nice because the last two planets we went to had the same kind of bunker, which the makes sense because you know these are probably all mass produced and then shipped off to the to the, to the worlds. But you know, from a gameplay standpoint, it's all very samey. <laughs> it's doing it again. It is. It's purring. So um, when. Uh, Shatner and um, and Nimoy, when they found out that uh, the studio wasn't going to hire the black woman and the Japanese guy and the Russian guy to play their parts in Star Trek and replace them with white people. Well, Russians are white, but you know what I mean. Um, Nimoy was like, this isn't right. Like, he, was, he talked with, like, I think he talked with Shatner and the others, and they're like, it's not Star Trek without them. Like, they're the most... They're, they're the biggest, you know... Like... Uh... I love the turn of thought. But, you know... It, Star part, Trek, would, they're Star part Trek of the wouldn't crew. be Star Trek without them. Yeah, they're part of the crew, and the show was breaking racial barriers, and exactly. suddenly to get rid of what was supporting that is just crazy. Exactly, and especially... They were going to keep the characters on the show, but change the voices to be Mage L. Barrett and uh, James Doohan. Yeah, but I mean, it was... Which is even more messed up. Yeah, but... Because they're friends, you know? Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, it wasn't completely because... Like, if they had the money for it, they would have totally done it. It wasn't just for racial yes. reasons. It was a money... It was motivated by money, but it was still racist. Because they picked those characters. And yes, they were they're more minor roles than Bones, Spock, and Kirk. But still, it was still Fuck. just like they were important to the show. Maybe they didn't serve important roles on the ship. Well, they were important roles on the ship, but maybe they weren't, you know, the main characters, but they were important characters to have on the show. And so the other actors were like, this isn't right. And Leonard Nimoy went to the producers and said, if you don't hire them, I'm not going to do the show. Hold it right there. This doesn't have to end in bloodshed. Oh, boy. Don't come any closer. We can do this the hard way, or we can end this peacefully. 
I didn't think you Batarians knew the meaning of the word. Look, I'm just doing my job here. Hijacking this rock wasn't my idea. I signed on to make a little profit. A quick slave grab, nothing more. This isn't just a slave grab anymore. Millions of people are going to die. Don't you think I know that? I'm just following orders here. If it were up to me, we'd have already left. Well, it's not too late. You can still leave. I don't think so. Bollock would skin me alive and sell my hide out of spite. Crazy bastard. This whole mission's gone to hell and I'm gonna pay for it. So why do you listen to him? Good question. I had a bad feeling about this from the moment we landed. Now Balak wants you dead. And what Balak wants, Balak gets. I can't change that. Do you always want to be second in command? Get me out of here and I'll take care of Balak. Then you can start giving the orders. Huh. An interesting proposal. It certainly has benefits over the current situation. Shut it down. This is Balak's problem now. I hope you're as quick with a gun as you are with your promises. For both our sakes. Balak will get what's coming to him, and so will you if I ever catch you in human territory again. Are we clear? Perfectly. Balak's holed up in the main facility. You'll need this to get in. Don't underestimate him. He's a mean bastard. Let's go! We're getting off this rock! Nice. I had the urge to kill them outright, but... Sometimes you just gotta, like, push for a few feet when you can't get a mile. And it's definitely better that he's taking over rather than Balak, because Balak is obviously crazy and wanting to kill millions of humans. Mm -hmm. They're just a bunch of no-good slavers. I'd rather have the bunch of no-good slavers over the people that want to kill millions of humans. Mm -hmm. So, um, awesome. That is the last fusion torch. The last thing we have to do now... Technically, it's a quick save. Technically, we're not on a timer anymore. Is we got to go to the main facility. What's the new waypoint up there? There, yeah, that's it. The main facility. Okay, let's go to survey station two, three, and then head up there. Um, and Wait, I'll... we should go to the one on the bottom left first because it's closer, and we have to go back up to the top of the map anyway later. But we're already here. We're that far away from it. Well, true, it's not gonna- it won't shave that much time, but if we head down, and then back up, uh, we save this much distance. It's a tiny, tiny, okay. tiny concern. Right. I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna- I'll snap the recording off when we do- finish doing, uh, Survey Station 3. And I'll right. restart it when we get back to the main facility. I... So let's see what's up in here. Hello? Hello? Mr. Person things. Hard decryption. Oh, Jesus Christ. Wow. Uh, let's be careful with this. Fuck uh. me sideways. Uh. Yes, we are going to override that. Whoa. That looks pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good. That's why I wanted to grab it. Um, Communications are down. There are non-corporate drop ships landing near the main facility. These are the, probably the Batarians. I'm arming the defense drones. I'm not waiting for my pickup. I'm going to investigate. Oh, there's defense drones! <laughs> Shit! Where are they? Oh, they're called over at the freaking place. Hey, kill them! Get them! Tally, take control. Assume direct control, please. There we go. Well, that was a pain in the ass. Alright, let's head to number three now. I found a thing! Technician kit. Logic arrest tool. Ooh, that's a cool new Omni tool. Aw, that mm. sucks to be him. Man, these Batarians are literally killed everyone up here. I was feeling super generous when I let that one guy go. 
Holy fuck! <laughs> Look at that thing! Look how much of an upgrade that is over what we're, yeah. she's using. My god. That kind of logic can arrest me any day. I think there's, um... I think there's another really ridiculous biotic app, amp, that, um... I can get Liara while I'm here. This, uh, this DLC provides some pretty amazing upgrades, actually, if I remember right. Because it's not... Are we headed in the right direction? Yeah. Okay. If you see it out on the mini-map, there's a blinking arrow. I set a waypoint. Oh. And, uh, it'll take us right where we need to go. parallel parking job. Yep. Another technician kit. Oh god, another Omni tool that's ridiculous looking. Ugh. Man, I really want to kill some Batarians now. I should not have let those guys go. I should have just killed them. Now you're not feeling so Now generous. I'm respecting it. Or, sorry, I'm not respecting it. I'm regretting it. I don't know why I said respecting. I am regretting my decision to let those guys go. Mm. I really... I really had a moment. It was the racism thing. You pulled the racism card on me, <laughs> and I started to feel bad. <laughs> That's totally what it was. So that... All I have to do to get you to side with some awful person from now on is to just start really dumping irrationally on said awful person. Yes, actually, it works really well. Yeah, I can see I that. I have a guilty conscience. Like, a super guilty conscience. I, you know, I can't think of any actual examples, but I know there have been, where, like, the media or certain people in politics will start dumping on a particular thing and drumming up actual sympathy for it, even though the thing actually is pretty bad. The thing or the person, either legislation or a politician of some kind. Okay. Hmm. You were having a nice conversation, so I didn't want to cut the camera. And... <laughs> yeah, you can now if you want. It's fine. We're, we're already <laughs> we're almost there anyway. Well, yeah, I'm just saying file size has been a concern, so. It's fine. Worst case scenario, I can go just go buy another terabyte hard drive. It's fine. It's whatever. How much are they these days? Uh, 30 bucks a piece, I think. 30? Yeah. Oh, that's not a big deal at all. Yeah. It's, I can just go to Best Buy and get one. Uh, two terabyte would probably run me about $50. Dude, I want one. Yeah, seriously. They're really nice to have. I kind of actually need to replace one of my hard drives soon. It's aging. Uh, do you have an SSD? No. Should probably get an SSD. I'm not sure, because you guys had some trouble getting yours set up. Um, actually I didn't. My SSD is awesome. It oh. works really well. Yeah. We've got a lot of red. Those are a lot of turrets. We're having a lot of, a lot of turrets, <laughs> as they, as they say. I'm gonna have a, a lot of fair, fair share of turrets. Oh, Keep firing right. your gun over and over and over. It's getting repetitive. I'm sorry. I have terra turrets, turrets. Tur oh, wow. I, I was trying so hard not to say turrets. I forgot how to pronounce turrets. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shit. P.S. Cock socks. You know that's not real turrets. I have no idea. That episode was insulting. And racist. I have no... That episode was racist against people with Tourette's. <laughs> I have no idea how Tourette's actually works. There was actually, um, I had, I had, um, I believe it was Tourette's. Maybe there's a, maybe there's another term for it, because it wasn't, Tourette's is like for any, like, tick, right? It doesn't have to be verbal, it could be physical and stuff like that. Yeah, um. Um, there was someone in one of my classes years ago who was always repeating the final syllable of every sentence they spoke. So when you heard them talk, it would be like this. 
I played the first Mass Effect game, aim, and, and it was really good, but... And they would do it every single time they paused to take a breath. And it was really, like, nobody said anything. We, we all respected it, like, it was, like, it was weird and we all acknowledged it, but no one ever talked about it. I would totally ask him about it. I would be like, dude, are you okay? Why, you, why do you do that? Um, I wouldn't because you get, you'd have to believe the pro there's, she probably gets asked that all the time. Well, if and, everyone's too afraid to ask her, I mean, it would be nice for just one person to say something. Well, so, at the same time, what, what would the what would be the point of the conversation other than to just affir affirm the fact that uh, she had Tourette's or something like it? So there's nothing we can do about it. So you would know, like, if someone else is like, well, that girl talks funny, doesn't she? You'd be like, dude, shut up. She has Tourette's. Like, seriously. Fuck. <laughs> Like, well, I would have done that anyway. I would have been like, dude, you don't know. She probably has a mental... She probably just has, you know, a tick, and she can't help herself. I don't see any other explanation beyond that. She certainly wasn't doing it on purpose. Other than, yeah, she was just doing it to fuck with people. Which probably wasn't true. No. If she was, she was doing an amazing job of holding it. Because it was, you know... Man, we got that guy in a corner. By the way, this room is um, is very very big. This is uh, what you would call an arena, mm -hmm. I believe, in um, some other game mm -hmm. I might have played. It's a very pretty room too. You can just sort of take this one in, but um, it is a good place for snipery, as it so happens. Let's try to sniper some people. There we go. This one down. Um. Oh god, that was a good shot. And get him in the dick! Get him in the- yeah! <laughs> he almost took Tally's head off. He almost did. I think Tally actually managed to get him. Okay, there's still a guy over there on the far side. I think I'm gonna try to get him from here. I just, I think that... Where the hell is he? And I haven't spoken to people with those kind of conditions, so this is me assuming things that may not be true. Um, but I feel like I don't have the right to really approach somebody that I think might have a condition, mental or otherwise, mm -hmm. and go... Excuse me, but I've noticed you keep doing this particular thing that's very unusual. Well, I wanted I to know if you're okay, as if they were unhealthy or something. Because they're not unhealthy. They're yeah, you're right. Fine. That would be really weird, wouldn't it? So it it, it makes me it, it makes me um, feel like I'm respecting them more by not bringing it up because I feel like if I had that problem. If I had an uncontrollable tick like that, You're probably I would right. not want everybody I meet to keep bringing it up because I'd feel very self-conscious about it. Yeah, you're, you're actually absolutely right. I don't know what I was thinking when I was saying I would just ask. Well, you you were concerned because you wanted to make you wanted to have like a definitive ground to stand on if somebody else was making fun of the person. Well, but, I mean, I just wouldn't want people to just like start talking about it like like it's a conversation piece. Like, why does that girl have that blah blah blah? I'd rather just have an answer, you know. Yeah, know. but some, but you know, we're not entitled to answers. It's not my answers. place. It's not my place. Yeah, I it's. I'm, I understand. <laughs> Mass Effect. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um. All right. It, this is good sci-fi. It's bringing out some really deep philosophical conversations, and that's exactly what Over. science fiction should do. Yes. This is a room full of batarians. They are pissed off at me. You can't call them that, dude. That's racist. That is literally what their name is. No, y dude, that's... It's, yeah, it's the name of their race. It's racist. You have to call them humanoids. What What makes them different from you? Seriously, what... what how is that Batarian that you killed any different from you? You He's both live. You both talk. You both blink. Well, I, mean, I think they blink. And you're killing them. I think they blink. You're outright killing them. You know I don't even know you anymore. You know what makes you know what makes us different? 
they can do that to me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was a neural shock. That's a that's a sentinel ability. So somewhere in this room there's a sentinel. And he's being a bitch. I'm gonna go hunt him down. I'm headed up here. Be careful because his senses are all heightened. He get the drop on you. Oh, Jesus. That was a reference to the short-lived UPN show, The Sentinel. Ask your parents, folks. <laughs> grenade storage box over here. I'll take a grenade, thank you. Can we... My god, we've been fighting in here for a while, haven't we? <laughs> this has just been one crazy match. Oh, the door opened. Die, human. Oh, hi. Okay, now he's being racist. You can kill him. You humans. You're almost more trouble than you're worth. We humans what? <laughs> what are you doing? Let the hostages go, and maybe you'll live long enough to explain yourself to the council. I don't answer to the council. Or to you. I'm leaving this asteroid. If you try to stop me, I'll detonate these charges, and your helper and her friends are all going to die. <laughs> Over my dead body. That's exactly what he inside. said. <laughs> not after what you've done. What I've done? This is nothing compared to what's been done to the Batarians. Oh, here we go. You killed 300... Th oh, wait. No, sorry. Sorry. Wrong game. Scrounge. I'll excuse myself. It's been like that for days. He just walks away. Why blame us? Why take it out on these people? They didn't do anything to you or the Batarians. Didn't do anything? Aside from colonizing a world that could have been ours? Aside from using resources that should have been ours? Wow, this guy's a selfish dick. Yeah. We were left to defend ourselves, but the humans were stronger than us. Would have we been. That implies that they didn't belong to them yet, so it was fair game. But it didn't matter. It was you. You and your kind are the only reason we're in this position. That doesn't make it right. And how does killing innocent people make up for that? I could ask you the same thing. How many innocent Batarians died at Torfin? Ooh. Oh Ooh. my god. Have you forgotten? Torfin Were, was they weren't in innocent. Your attack on Elysium. You pushed, we pushed back. Yeah. Enough! You couldn't possibly understand. Actually, you just don't want to understand, and I'm done wasting my- Nobody breath. understands me, Mom! If you want your friends to live, I suggest you step aside. Yeah, it gives you this conversation choice in this <sighs> DLC. Either let him go to save the hostages or attack him. If you attack him, the hostages die? Yes. <sighs> I'm not letting him go. I'm not. There's no way. I'm not letting a terrorist Because he's just going to go off and do kill it other again. People. Yes. But it'll be the last thing you do. I'd probably do the same this thing. Worth it. It's the lives of six for untold amounts. I'm going to enjoy gutting you. You motherfucker. I'm going to kill your ass. Don't you run away from me. You dick. Wow, look at all these drones. Holy shit. Commander Shepard, I'm with Alliance News. How can you justify the Die, murder bitch! of sick- Die, bitch! <laughs> Die, bitch! Die, bitch! <laughs> Get down! <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Fucked him up. Fucked him up. That was great. We have avenged you, six nameless people whom we'll never forget, but already have. Oh, come on. Go, go, go! I remember that one guy, his name was Dr. Wayne. Yeah, I remember Dr. Wayne. He was a good guy. I but thought. he actually isn't one of these guys. He was on another planet. Yeah, that was a completely different level. But I'm gonna just call... I'm gonna use Dr. Wayne anyway, because that's the name that I remember. Alright. So, that's now one of the dead people is right named now. Dr. Wayne. Where's the this freaking other guy at? What's new, pussycat? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you humans think you're so superior. <laughs> just... 
but you're no better than us. I gave you a chance to save them and you threw it away. <laughs> Who's the real terrorist here? Still you. It is still you. I'm just gonna kill him. I'm not even gonna give him a chance. You. But you're dead. Not negotiating with terrorists doesn't in and of itself make you a terrorist. If you're careful. Watch where you step. There were bombs and there may be more. I need a sapper team to sweep the area. Right. I'll be careful. You did it. Another hour in our course would have been irreversible. I ran the numbers, Shepard. X-57 would have struck near the capital city. The most densely populated region. But that's not going to happen, thanks to you. Have you found Katie and her team? You might want to sit down. <laughs> I'm sorry, Simon. Balak took Kate and some others as hostages. There was a bomb in their cell and... You're, you're not kidding, are you? Oh, God. How could this happen? I thought you were... Couldn't you save them? The Fuck! Cost was too high, I would say. Yeah, it was. Yes, I could have. If I let the Batarians go. But then they might have done the same thing to another colony. Or two more. Or a dozen. That doesn't... I know in my head what you're saying makes sense. It's just a little hard to see the big picture right now, alright? I understand that. Shepard, thank you. For my grandchildren's lives. I don't think I'll stick around, though. Not with the team gone. Too many ghosts. It's time for me to get back and spend some time with my family. Before I go, I'd like to offer you something. Maybe you'll have more use for it than I will. As lead engineer, I get some quality items. Take your pick. You've earned it. Um. Does Tally have Corian armor yet? She does. Okay. We've picked up Omni tools already. This particular Omni tool is really good, I think. But I don't remember straight up. What do you think I should go for? I'm either going to go for human heavy armor or uh, the Omni tool. What do, what armor do you have right now? It's pretty good. I think I'm gonna go for the Omni tool because it it requires you to have charm to actually get it mm. because it's a dialogue option. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna ask him for the Omni tool. I think that might be the best thing. I know it's a lot to ask, but that Omni tool of yours, I could really use something like that. Shepard, I think I mentioned that you saved my kids and grandkids. What's an Omni tool compared to that? take it with my blessing I hope you get good use out of it bachelor three engineers one more thing you asked me to look into your missing engineers have you found them you may want to sit down again only two I found two of them they didn't make it I didn't we find all three I see. well maybe the last is still out there could you please keep looking I think we missed one but I don't know where it is Be well Shepard we owe you. There was the one outside their house, there was the one inside their house, and there was the one outside the burned-out Mako. Yeah, we just missed one somewhere, but it's fine. It, I, I don't think the reward is really all that crazy, and I don't feel like going all over this rock looking for another one. Okay. By the way, that's the Omni tool we got. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, that tech cooldown bonus allows Liara to tear apart some peoples. <laughs> Yeah, it uh, it really it's gonna help her abilities out a lot. So um, let me see here. Is he still here? But you're not equipping it to her now. I did. I already equipped it to her. That was Tally. I know. But you said Liara would it would help Liara. I mean. Oh, you meant to say Tally. I meant to say Tally. Okay. Liara uses a biotic amp. Okay. So whenever I get an Omni tool, I give it to um, oh everyone in here is dead. That's right. Um. I just ran over all their corpses. Okay, good. Um, right, then. Well, uh... We didn't get out of here. But that was the Bring Down the Sky DLC. Mm. Uh, Self-contained, very good story. Mm. Honestly. I I really love this DLC. Compared to, uh... Especially compared to freaking Pinnacle Station. <laughs> like, holy balls. I can't believe... Pinnacle Station was DLC I actually had to pay for, and this was just free and came with a game. I 
like the my favorite part about Pinnacle Station isn't the fact that it's broken. It's that all the characters at the station are total smart asses to you. Yeah, they're and all so like... like it's it's DLC that's not only broken, but the parts of it that work just don't like you, <laughs> and don't have to like feel like they don't have time for you. It's great. 